In this chart patterns course, we'll be looking at 18 chart patterns, how to trade them, where to take entries and exits, and then the most common and effective chart patterns traders will use, including real world examples of them. As you can see, we'll be looking at trend continuation patterns, trend reversal patterns, high probability setups and how to spot them, and then actually how to trade these yourself in real time. Check the timestamps down below in the description for each section of this video and all of the chart patterns plus other resources I talk about will be listed down there, including the crypto investor course. There are over 50 videos in the trading section here which go along with these chart patterns and there is a specific crypto trading uh, section as well, actually how to trade crypto. My portfolio and trades are in there as well. We've got a big group of people trading so check that out if you're interested. At a very basic level, chart patterns give us two bits of information that we can use to trade. The first is the direction of travel, and the second is the type of chart that we're actually looking at or the type of pattern. So the two directions of travel are either to the upside, which will be called bullish momentum or a bullish direction, and to the downside, which is called bearish or bearish direction. Now the type of chart pattern is going to give us more clues. You can either have a reversal or a continuation, and you can actually have both of these depending on the direction as well. So you can have a bullish reversal pattern. This means that the price is coming down and is reversing to the upside. Therefore, the chart pattern is a bullish reversal. You can also have a bullish continuation where you are in an uptrend and a chart, pat a chart pattern is telling you that the trend will continue and so you can trade also to the upside. Just conversely as well, bearish, you can have a bearish reversal. This is when you have an uptrend and then the chart pattern is telling you that that uptrend is going to reverse. So you take a bearish position for the price and a bearish continuation, you are in a downtrend and a chart pattern tells you that that downtrend will continue. So you continue to be bearish and take bearish uh, price trades as well. Now, neutral consolidations are much more difficult to actually um, you know, accept and trade, but we can look at some of these as well to make sure that we're not trading those if it's too difficult to understand the direction. This is what they look like, a bullish reversal. As you can see, we're in a downtrend right here, but we have a chart pattern right here that is a bullish reversal pattern, and that means we take a long position and actually the reversal of the downtrend goes to the upside. Now, the bullish continuation, as you can see here, is within an uptrend and you have a chart pattern here that is telling you that that bullish momentum will continue so you continue to take uh, upwards uh, trades. Now the bearish reversal as you can see at the bottom left, a bearish reversal is where you're in an uptrend but the chart pattern here is telling you that that uptrend is actually going to reverse and so you actually take bearish trades to the downside as the chart pattern is telling you that that is what is going to happen, a reversal to the downside. A bearish continuation is within a downtrend, you get the chart pattern telling you that that downtrend may actually continue and you continue your bearish trades. We will look at all of these throughout this video. How do we go ahead and trade chart patterns then? We need a few skills to identify these on charts. So the first thing is come to a professional trading system. I use Bybit, so I'll leave a link to them in the description. They give a deposit bonus up to $4,000. Um, so check the details via that link. You make a deposit and they'll give you the bonus to trade with. Um, but we need some skills and to be able to use some drawing tools. TradingView is great as well. I often use this, I'll leave a link below as well. This is actually free to use, and then you can plug in your brokers uh, like Bybit to that. Um, so what we need to do is come to the professional trading system on TradingView here, right within Bybit. And now we need to be able to use this right here, which is trend lines. So you can draw these trend lines on the chart just by clicking, and you can click them again, and you can make the patterns and uh, trends on the chart like this. And we also need drawing tools. If you wanna use that, you can do that and make some drawings around the chart patterns. So really all you need is trend lines as you can see, and you may also want to click out and do some horizontal or raise or vertical raise as you can see here. So a horizontal ray, you just click it once and it puts a perfectly straight line in, press delete and it deletes. So that's really the basics that we need to actually draw these trend lines on the charts. Let's come to reversal patterns. Reversal patterns show a trend reversal. They can be in uptrends, and so that would be a top, looking at the top and reversal back downwards, or they could be in a downtrend, which we would see as bottoms, 
This is when a bottom is formed, looking at the end of the downtrend, a bottom forming and then reversing to the upside. So of all of these patterns, these are trend reversal patterns, either looking for the top of a market to short or looking for the bottom of a market to go long. Uh, so an uptrend can change into a bearish trade with a reversal pattern and a downtrend can turn into a bullish trade with a reversal pattern. A double top is a bearish reversal pattern. This often happens within an uptrend. The price is rejected twice at a same or similar level and it shows a loss in the bullish momentum of the price and bears will take short positions or sell in order to benefit from the price falling down. Here's what it looks like on a textbook example. You have an uptrend or an upwards movement in the price and then you get the first top. Now remember, this means that sellers are coming in and are forcing the price lower. And then what we do is after we come down, we actually meet the neckline. This is where we get that first support because buyers have been pushing the price up. Sellers came and pushed it down. Buyers are trying to force the price up again. And what we can see is uh, the neckline is formed. They have another go and then they get rejected for a second time. This is bearish price action because buyers have tried to force the price up twice and been rejected twice. Now what we can do is look to trade the breakout of the neckline. So we wait for confirmation right here. And as the bearish candle comes in and breaks this neckline, we take a short trade to the downside. This is what it looks on a real chart. Now real charts are never perfect, but I can see somewhat of a double top that formed here. So we look at the brush, you can see one top, and another top right here. Now this is actually even better because the second top is at a lower price level than the first, indicating that sellers are coming in and buyers are very weak. So how would we actually trade this? Well, we can see the neckline as well. So we can trade this neckline, which is right here. So what we would do is we get the first top, second top, and then we trade this breakout here. So we can take a short position we trade the breakout here. When would the pattern be invalidated? If it breaks through this level, you can put that stop loss in and then the size of the pattern would be about this much and we could take that as a take profit. On this occasion, it did work out and that would have been a profitable trade. The price did recover somewhat after, but we would have taken our profits already on that double top trade. A double bottom pattern is a bullish reversal pattern. So the exact opposite of a double top. The price gets supported twice at the same level and there is a loss of downward momentum where buyers force the price higher. Buyers will try to catch a further price move upwards and trade the breakout. This is the textbook example, a downtrend, and then buyers once and twice support the price at a certain level. We trade the breakout of the neckline right here in a long position with a stop loss somewhere in the pattern. A perfect example of that is the Ethereum chart. And as we can see, a massive downtrend and eventually this downtrend reverses with a triple bottom. A triple bottom is the same as a double bottom, obviously just three touches. We have one touch, two touches and three touches. So that is the triple bottom. But of course, we do have the neckline as well. A perfect neckline and resistance is right here. So we have this pattern here and this is what we can trade. So we see the height of the pattern, which is this, and we trade a breakout of the pattern right here. So we can take a long position because this is a bullish reversal, long position on the breakout. We put the stop loss somewhere within the pattern where we would be invalidated on our long trade. And then we take profits at the height of the pattern. Now we would have taken great profits here and we would have missed out on a lot more profits, but that's trading. We just trade the size of the pattern itself. We trade the breakout of this double or triple bottom. There is an alternative method to trading double or triple bottoms and tops, and that is actually taking a much earlier entry. So instead of trading the breakout, we actually trade after the second bounce is confirmed, the exit or level of the trade profits is the same. It's more or less the pattern height and the stop loss would be an amount below the support and resistance line. So on this triple bottom pattern, instead of waiting for a breakout of the pattern and trading there, we would actually look for a bounce. So this would be the end of the downtrend that we saw, but we're waiting for confirmation. So we get that here and an uptrend right here. 
Many traders would actually take the, take the trade early instead of waiting for the breakout, try and get in at this lower price. The benefit of this is that you are entering your trade at a lower price. And so if the trade does break out, you are potentially getting more profits because you can trade the breakout of the trend height, which would actually be a bit higher if you were to take the earlier trade because you would still be having the trade height from the breakout. The downside of this is you get less confirmation of the actual breakout of the trend. And so you may actually, uh, the trend may reverse and you may make a bad trade. So you have a higher probability of making a bad trade, but you do offset that with potentially higher trading rewards. The stop loss would be somewhere at the support and resistance level, because remember this now is the support and resistance level because we've got rejected from the downtrend twice. So that's obviously the level where the market is buying. If the price breaks down from there, then we've got the trade wrong. So that's where our stop loss would be. It's an alternative method with slight extra risk and extra reward potential. Another thing to keep in mind when trading tops and bottoms where you see these price rejections is support and resistance levels. Support and resistance is simply an area on the chart where price has bounced off before. These tend to be quite strong in the way that the price moves against them. So you can use the pattern with other technicals to enhance your trading like support and resistance levels. They create more strength and momentum. What I mean by that is looking at this triple bottom pattern again, what we can see if we zoom out on the chart is that this price level at $1,000 is obviously an extremely important price level. Just from a human perspective to trade a round number like 1000 is obviously important. But as we can see previously in the chart, we also saw a massive area of trade around this level. So this price level is extremely important and it acted as support and resistance before during this price trading uh, and it will act that way again at this one. So we have a very strong price level where the price is being supported and so that gives us extra confidence that we are actually entering a bottoming pattern and that we can trade long in this instance. It doesn't work out every time but you can use other technicals to give yourself extra edge. To show you the textbook examples of a triple top and bottom, they are right here. We have touches. Again, with a triple top, you have the first, second, and third touches. And of course, the neckline here, which trades in between. And so this is where you take your short position at the break. And the pro take profit is the height of the pattern, which is the neckline and the top patterns. For the triple bottom, as you can see here, first, second, and third touches, and the neckline here is where the pr price bounces to in between. We take a long position in this case at the break, and the height of this pattern here is where we take uh, our take profit for a triple bottom. Triple and double bottoms are the same pattern, triples with three touches and not two. Next up is a head and shoulders pattern. Again, this is a reversal pattern in the same vein as a top or a bottom. We're looking at a head and shoulders drawn on the chart, which I'll show you in real time. It's a trend reversal pattern. So in an uptrend, we're looking for a head and shoulders to show a reversal from the uptrend into a downtrend. It shows a loss of momentum and a failure to break price levels. And if it's around support and resistance, it can create more strength to the chart as well. If, if the price breaks all levels, consider flipping your bias. So if you're in an uptrend, but you have this head and shoulders reversal pattern and the price is breaking down from that, you may have to flip your bias and actually take bearish positions because that uh, uptrend may actually be starting to come to an end or has come to an end. This is a normal head and shoulders pattern. It is a bearish pattern. So we get the uptrend. This would be an uptrend here. And then we get the shoulder like this, and then we get uh, you know the uptrend and a sell-off into the neckline. You then get the head like this, which is a higher high. So again, very important to watch for. And you get the sell-off into the neckline. And then you get the third attempt, which is the shoulder, which doesn't come as high as the head. So that third shoulder is the you know the very weak momentum where you're seeing that buyers are just unable to force this price up anymore and you start falling down again you take the short position on the breakout which we'll see so that is the head and shoulders normal pattern which we'll look at right now this is a perfect head and shoulders on the eth chart so we have an uptrend right here fantastic uptrend that is taking us to essentially all-time highs but 
we see this head and shoulders pattern play out after a very, very long and large change in the price to the upside, we are seeing that momentum fade. So this is the pattern. I'm just gonna take this away so that we can actually draw this on the chart. We have the shoulder, we have the head, and then we have the other shoulder. And once we break the neckline here, then we trade this breakout to the downside. So short position, trade the breakout here. You put the stop loss somewhere within the pattern that would invalidate your short and the size of the pattern, which would be this. That would be our take profit, as you can see a good trade on in this instance as well. If you use a crypto trading system, you can draw these on the charts very simply. Come to the left hand corner and then choose head and shoulders pattern. You can trade this. So we have the shoulder here. We also have the head, which is the second triangle. And then we have the right hand shoulder and we can put those together to draw the head and shoulders pattern. And that would be our neckline. Now, as you can see here, it's not always a perfect neckline like in the textbook examples, as you can see on the left hand side. But what we're looking at now is actually a slanted neckline, as you can see, where the support is actually getting lower over time during the pattern. That's actually good if you are looking to take and trade this pattern, because what we're looking at here is a slanted neckline. As you can see, we do have the head and shoulders pattern, but the uh, support is actually slanting down. This shows even weaker momentum where the price support is actually to the downside and can't even remain uh, horizontal. And so what we would trade here is that short position showing that the price momentum is falling away the price support is also falling away. That's giving us good confluence to actually trade this as a bearish pattern where momentum has trained, changed from the upside into the downside. Head and shoulders can also play out in reverse, which would be a more bullish pattern, which would be an inverse head and shoulders. So again, you would actually be looking at a downtrend here. So much like a double or triple bottom, you're looking for a downtrend with a reversal back into you know, a price movement to the upside. So you're looking at a downtrend here and then you're looking at a shoulder to the downside, then the neckline, the head, then the second shoulder, and then you're looking to trade a breakout right here, which would actually be to the upside. This is also just a triple bottom. If you can look at that, it's essentially the same thing. So with an inverse head and shoulders, you're actually looking for a downtrend to be reversed. It's the exact opposite of the head and shoulders pattern. Now we'll look at formations and they come in three different types for me, which is triangles, wedges, and channels. In fact, there are some small differences between these, which does make it hard to trade them. But over time, you will see the difference between triangles and wedges, and also to take into account the broader trends in terms of what's happening here and being able to make better trading decisions when these formations actually play out on the chart. Triangles come in three types, ascending, descending, and symmetrical. Ascending triangles are usually bullish. So you wanna see these types of ascending triangle within uptrends, and then trade breakouts. Descending triangles are usually bearish. You're looking for these in downtrends as a continuation. And then symmet symmetrical triangles actually don't really tell us much, but we look at the wider trend. We look at the market itself as well, and we can actually make uh, breakout trades on these as well. We're gonna be looking at ascending triangles first though. Now these are mostly bullish. That's the way most traders will trade them. And so they're looking to go bullish on these ascending triangles within uptrends. But if you do get an ascending uh, triangle in a downtrend, that's not always bullish. You can actually wait for the breakout there before trading it to confirm uh, what's going on. Now the price is expected to break from the triangle pattern. So that's why we trade the breakout. They can be both a bull and bear flag, depending on market conditions. Mostly with ascending triangles, you're looking to try and trade bullish price action. So let's go over an ascending triangle here. Now, as you can see on real charts, you never get perfect price action. You can see that this is not a great top line for the ascending triangle. You're looking at a perfectly uh, horizontal line here, which only gets one touch, which is this right here. So not great. Um, we can see if we place the 
top of the triangle here, we get some breakouts here, which obviously isn't perfect. You can think of lines as areas rather than specific price levels. And you can either draw on the chart as well, a rectangle and actually just give it an area in the chart, which is essentially the area that you'll trade if you break out from that. Um, so a key tip there. But what we can see, which is really the triangle itself playing out, is we want to see that the price, the bottom price is making higher lows. So you get the low here into the pattern and you just get the higher lows over time where sellers are just um, constantly selling into strength and buyers are constantly pushing the price up. And then you see this area here, which is a kind of level where you get this firm resistance, um, but it's being broken a couple of times. So we can see we're in a general uptrend for the most part, and we're looking to trade a breakout of this ascending triangle. So that is where we trade it, of course. This is a perfect textbook example. You have the resistance and you have the support, which is just getting higher and higher and higher. So really this is an uptrend and you're looking to trade a breakout right here. So on the chart, what we could do is take a long position and we would trade the breakout here. We can trade the size of the pattern, which would be this right here. That's the size of the pattern. So we trade that breakout with a stop loss somewhere within the pattern. And we would trade that breakout here. Again, that was a good trade in this instance. Descending triangles are mostly bearish. They can be bullish sometimes if you're in an uptrend, you can see the pattern playing out. And if you wait for the break and it's to the upside, then you may wanna trade that. For the most part, traders are looking for these in downtrends, looking for bearish continuation momentum. And so as we can see, the price is expected to break the triangle. Can be a bull or bear, but you know we're mostly looking at bearish momentum here. Um, so what we can see is, we get the wider downtrend, so we're definitely in a downtrend here, and we do meet some price support at this level. So we get price support a couple of times here. As you can see, we're looking, is there going to be a reversal? But as we can see, sellers are constantly selling down the price at lower highs. And so that is the bearish momentum where the price is really falling off. Now what we do is trade the breakout of this, just like every other pattern. So if we can see the uh, perfect example, we have the support level, and we have lower highs coming into this where sellers are just selling off the price. We trade the breakout here down lower at the size of the pattern. Now in this case, the pattern is actually quite large. Um, so you may want to trade that size if you want, or just trade a smaller a price movement if you want just to get the trade done. So we're gonna take a short position in this case. We're going to trade the breakout. The size of the pattern would be this, and we take the stop loss uh, somewhere that would be invalidating our trade like this. Again, this one worked out very well where that um, downtrend took the pattern and then continued into the downtrend. Symmetrical triangles are neither bullish nor bearish, but they do offer some insight into the volatility of the price. Now, when price contracts or when price volatility contracts, when it comes out of that pattern, you may actually be able to trade a breakout. And so you have to look at the wider market trends because they're not really bullish or bearish. And to be honest, you can draw a symmetrical triangle over pretty much any data point. And so they're not really great to trade for me, but they do exist and some traders trade them. So again, it can be bull or bear depending on the wider trend and the market conditions. But I'll show you an example of this. Like I said, you can pretty much draw a triangle over um, any uh, price data if you just take the highest and lowest point. And so it's not really a great pattern for me. However, as you can see here, you do get this uh, triangle playing out. So you get the price coming down and so sellers are selling off, but you can see here as well that actually if you continue this uptrend here, you're getting support at this price level. And so what traders will do is draw this triangle and say that when the price breaks out of it, maybe there will be some volatility when the price breaks out. So what you would actually do in this occasion is neither trend bullish or bearish, but actually wait for a breakout to trade. So as you can see in this example, and this is Bitcoin Live, um, we can see that out of this potential triangle here, which isn't great, because as you can see in the textbook example, you're just looking for price to kind of come to a, a head, which it kind of is doing on this occasion. You really don't know where the next move is going to be, but we've got a bearish breakout of this triangle that we've drawn here. And so what you would do is actually take a breakout trade in this instance. And so you would actually take a short trade on the breakout itself, and then potentially go uh, to the next level of support and resistance, which would be somewhere around here with a tight stop loss on any rejection of the trade itself. So as you can see, the triangle is coming into this price level. If the price moved up above this, 
you may get a breakout and so that's a rejection of your price level. As you can see, this trade isn't great. The risk reward isn't great. How do you actually trade a breakout? Well, what you would do is place a stop order. So what I would do is go to a conditional order here and then I would look at the trigger price, which on this occasion is 22,400 like this and the order price would be 22,400. You're putting a conditional or a stop order in and so the price only, uh, the system only trades when the breakout occurs. And so that means you can actually wait for a breakout to happen. So you would open a short position if it trades to the downside. So you could open short here, or you can have the same conditional order and actually trade it on an upside break around 23,008 or 900. So 23,800 and the order price 23, 800 and you could open a long position stop order. You could have both of these orders in at the same time. One would be here and one would be here. Whenever the break occurs, you take the position in that side. So if the upside break occurs, you take long. If the downside break occurs, you take short and you have to watch the trade. When the stop order is executed, you have to cancel out the other one and now you have a short position. And so that would be the breakout there. We did break out. We've been supported from this, but maybe the price will break down further into support. So these are not bullish or bearish. They're more for a breakout trade where you actually trade the breakout itself using conditional and stop orders. If that's a little bit complex. I do have some other videos that go through those. I'll leave them in the description. They're free on YouTube to see how the orders work. Uh, I cover these in the crypto course as well. Next up is wedges. You can have rising or falling wedges here and people trade the opposite direction of the wedge usually. So with a rising wedge, as you can see here, these are actually traded bearishly. And so with a rising wedge, you're actually looking for that uptrend in the price and you're looking to trade a downward break of this wedge. Now, if the price breaks upwards, then of course, maybe the trade just can't be traded and you have to go again. With a falling wedge to the downside, you're actually looking for the price to break out to the upside and then trade a long position of that wedge. Rising wedges, as you can see on the chart here, are usually traded to the downside and this one played out quite well. So you have an upward slope with the volatility reducing over time. They can break to the up and downside, but people usually look to trade them to the downside. As you can see here, you have this rising wedge, but actually traders will trade to the downside here. And so we can see that on the real uh, Bitcoin chart here. Again, we take the size of the pattern like this, and that would be our take profit. So we take a short position on the confirmation that we've actually broken out, which is this right here. And the size of the pattern would be around about this. And then the stop loss would be somewhere within the pattern. Now, as you can see here, if we were getting greedy and we took this much as a take profit, we may have actually not been able to take our trade as a profit and the price would eventually move back and potentially lost this money. So that really depends on uh, where your stop loss is, but you can see that the, um, the pattern played out. And so sometimes you win and lose depending on where your stop loss is and your take profit. But you can see the pattern played out where we take the short position on the breakdown of the wedge and try and take profits actually below the rising wedge. A falling wedge conversely is usually traded as a upside by most traders. So even though you get a falling price during the pattern, as you can see, traders try and trade a bullish breakout of the trade and actually take a long position. Now we can see this on the real chart as well. It's often good to trade falling wedges within wider uptrends. And so this is the real Ethereum chart. And as you can see, we're definitely seeing somewhat of an uptrend here with higher lows. And then we're seeing potentially higher highs here as well at a wider level. But during this pattern, as you can see it, um, we are seeing a potential wedge here. It's not perfect, but in the real world, nothing trades perfectly, but we're definitely seeing a wedge pattern of sorts play out. So we take the height of the pattern and that would be a potential take profit. So we take a long position on the breakout, which would be around here. We take a short, uh, we take a stop loss somewhere in the, uh, within the pattern that would invalidate us. And we can take a take profit somewhere the size of the trend. And because we're in that wider uptrend here, that works out for us and we can take those profits. Now we come to channels which have ascending and descending channels and then horizontal channels or consolidations. So ascending, descending and co consolidations. We'll look at ascending channels first. These are upwards sloping channels. Now there's two ways to trade an upwards sloping channel. The first one is to consider it an uptrend over a short period of time, which it actually is. 
The other way is to, is to consider it in a wider price trend and market trend. Here's what I mean by that. This is the real Bitcoin chart. And as you can see here, you could trade this trend itself as a horizontal uptrend channel on a lower time frame. No problem with that. You could take a long position somewhere within the trend because you're seeing the price movement. So you could say, we got the one touch here, we got another touch here and we're in an uptrend. So I could just take a long position and try and ride the trend up with a stop loss somewhere near the bottom of this trend and try and hope the price goes up and I could take that uh, position, you know, taking advantage of the upward trend channel. However, if we look at the wider trend of price, we can see that we're actually in a rejection and a downward move here. And so this is what's known as a bear flag. A bear flag looks like this, where you get a downward movement, you then, then get the horizontal upwards sloping channel, and you actually trade the breakout of this trend to the downside. So that would be the bear flag. So over a slightly longer time frame, you can see this actually play out. So what we have here is the horizontal channel, and then this would be the flag entry. So as we can see, we get the sell off here into the pattern, and that would be the size of our take profit. So this flag, the flagpole would be the take profit. Put that down here as our take profit. So we short the breakout, short the breakout of the channel. We put the stop loss somewhere within the channel where we get rejected, and our take profit is the size of the flagpole itself. So this is a bear flag where the price comes down. You meet this upward sloping ascending channel, which is actually a bear flag, and then you trade the breakout to the downside. Um, so if you are a very short term trader, you can take advantage of this short term upward sloping channel, but just take a step back and also realize that it might be a bear flag within a longer downtrend. Just a note on ascending channels as well, it does matter where the previous price action is from. We've just seen a downtrend example here where the ascending channel is bearish. However, what we can see here is that the previous price was actually very, very bullish with a massive breakout. And what we can see here is what is essentially an ascending channel um, that we would not consider bearish because we have an ascending channel right here, which because we are in an uptrend and a breakout, this wouldn't be a bearish uh, momentum chart pattern. So this ascending channel here in this instance, because we have this massive breakout here, then you're looking to potentially trade that breakout to the upside further as well. So it does matter where the wider trend is. If you took a long position on this trade, you would have actually have won. Now, again, we can see this fake out. So very difficult to trade this in the real world because maybe traders were thinking that the price was going to fall away, but this is actually not a bearish pattern because of the previous uptrend. So anywhere around here that you're actually looking to trade a breakout of that price level um, would have been a decent trade with stop loss around here. Now, as we can see also, this price level just has to uh, happens to be around a very important support and resistance level as well. If we zoom out, you can see the support and resistance level here. And that is why it's important to trade around important support and resistance levels and trade levels as well. So yeah, that was a very difficult trade and something that wouldn't have been easy to trade at the time. But ascending channels are not necessarily bullish or bearish. It matters where the previous trade has come from and the market conditions at the time. Conversely, descending channels are often seen as bullish, but again, it matters about the momentum of the chart previously. Downwards or descending channels can be seen as bull flags. And so we'll look at that here. This is a bull flag where you get a move upwards, you get the channel down, which is quite tight, and then you actually trade a bullish breakout on that instance. We can see a version of this on the Ethereum chart. Again, it isn't perfect, but we have a huge uptrend movement, and then we have the consolidation at a price level. This isn't a perfect uh, bull flag with a descending channel, but it is more or less. You could even have this maybe as a wedge or a descending wedge, which again is a bullish kind of bullish pattern that you trade onto the outside, the upside break. So whether it's a channel that you see or potential um, wedge here, you can see that play out. And so you'd be looking to trade the breakout here to a further upside movement. So descending channel isn't bearish itself. You could trade the inner channel here, but that's the lower probability trade. What you actually want to do is trade 
the uh, long position here because you have an uptrend, you have the pause, and then you trade the breakout. So long the breakout, short somewhere within the channel, and then you would have the flagpole. It's not a flagpole again, so yeah, not perfect, but you would look at somewhere like that to maybe be taking profits, you know, somewhere where you consider it a decent length uh, that a breakout would occur, somewhere within this range, and you would trade a long position on the bullish breakout here. Now, of course, it can trade bearishly as well. If we actually got a breakdown here, maybe you'd look to take short positions here, but you trade breakouts of these channels, uh, and you also look at the wider trend. We also get consolidations as well, typically extremely difficult to trade. Consolidation is an area of sideways price movement where buyers and sellers pretty much are at equilibrium. So we can see an example of that here on the chart. You get this sideways movement of consolidation. How to trade this? Extremely difficult. As you can see, you get many false breakouts of consolidation. So we got a potential upside break here. And if you traded this very tightly on a long position, so if we trade long here, you can see we would have got completely wrecked um, because we've basically gone in a long position and the price has come down. So not a great trade in that instance. Also to the downside, you see a false breakout downside break here. If you would have traded that short, Again, absolutely wrecked because you're looking to take profits lower and it didn't get there. Consolidations are very, very hard to trade, um, are almost impossible. And when there is a break, you're always afraid to trade it as well because you don't want to go long and get caught out again like you did here. So consolidations are really, really difficult to trade. What I like to do potentially is look out and look at actually support and resistance levels. So as we can see, we have a more important price level, which is around this price here, if you were trading this consolidation, you're looking at either a downward break to support and resistance or an upward break to support and resistance. It's almost impossible to trade. And so again, I would maybe use um, stop orders here. So if we go back to Bybit, you would use the conditional or stop orders to trade a breakout either way so that either breakout, you can actually get an order in if you wanted to trade that. Um, and so it's very difficult to trade consolidations. The only way would be potentially to try and trade a breakout with a stop order. But again, when you use stop orders and you're trading breakouts, probabilities also become a little bit skewed in terms of the profits you can make. Another chart pattern to trade is the rounding bottom or the cup and handle pattern. These are very rare, but when you do see them, they're great to trade because they often give huge breakouts to the upside. You can see you often get like a downtrend or a consolidation into this pattern, but the price action tr changes considerably over a short period of time. When you see the second half of this pattern, you're seeing the price just um, melt upwards and buyers are coming in and buying everything on the market. And the reason I show you this pattern is because this actually was what happened to Bitcoin very recently as of making this video. You can see this rounding bottom or this kind of parabolic melt up. And when this happens, you can just catch these. You can see the price is not allowed to actually um, go down. And it's actually the price movements getting exponentially more to the upside. So this is a rounding bottom or a parabolic move up. And you just want to catch this move anywhere uh, and take a trade in this. And as you can see, an explosive move to the upside on this instance, where the price went from around 17 to 20,000 within a matter of days. This price action here is massively bullish. And it just shows that there are no sellers at this price anymore. And you're gonna get a big move. So if you ever see this parabolic melting up of price, it can often leave, lead to a very decent price movement like that. Cup and handle is the same, so watch out for this. You have this parabolic move here. What sometimes happens as well is the handle here. So you're getting the parabolic move from buyers, kind of forcing it up, and then you're getting this descending channel. Remember, descending channels are not necessarily bearish. They're often something where you trade the breakout, and so you can trade the breakout of the cup and handle pattern here. So look for these, um, melt up parabolic moves in price to the upside. If you see those, they're very, very interesting to trade. Even if you get a handle with this descending wet, descending channel, this is actually a bullish trade where you trade the bullish breakout if it occurs. So to recap on chart patterns then, all we're looking for is a pattern to try and trade a breakout, either in a continuation of the trend or a reversal of that trend. Now, patterns are just one type of trading. They are not a panacea. They don't work all the time, but at least 
at the very least they give us an area where we can make an entry and have a stop loss and then we can hone our skills over time they're going to fail a lot of the time because market conditions change and patterns don't know what's happening in the market and so prices are affected by fundamentals use low and high time frames to get better odds what trend are you in where is the market you have to use technicals with an understanding of fundamentals as well if you want to learn more about fundamentals crypto course linked in the description buy bit deposit bonus up to four thousand dollars as well check the links in the description for everything else i mentioned i'm james with money cheers for watching and i'll see you in the next one